Hello everyone, and welcome to an all-new campaign, where we will be playing as the dwarfs, the Dreaming Dwarfs of Verkul Dramak. This is a one of the notoriously very difficult starts. So instead of playing it straight, I decided to choose it, right? So what I did is I started as the command, I started as the command, took over half of Rajnodaga, immediately truce broke, finished them off, and then release them as a vassal. So, are they still a vassal? I don't think so. Not a vassal anymore. Yes, we are. Okay, that makes much more sense. Yeah, we're still a vassal. That's what I thought. Um, after that, a uh, command falls to a bunch of uh, coalition wars. But I decided to... What's the word? Uh, hurt them even further by releasing a bunch of vassals. So, Stolen Gem and Blackstep dot, uh, got released in the first coalition war. But... Yeah, and then Sir is still a vassal. Rajandagi? Is that how you pronounce that? Raga Jandi was uh, one of the released ones. And uh, looks like a Tosk is free. And then, how about Bloodsong? Bloodsong is still a slave state. Thunderfist is still a slave state. Yeah, if I remember correctly, yeah, these guys are still guaranteed by Azdrakuma. And yeah, to play as uh, Rajandaga. Rajan Daga, I believe. You might just have to control this stuff, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to play as them to get this event. This is the event that spawns the Axbello Cartel. The, Ambasis, the Amethyst Dwarves in Sharjah, Sharaja, have funded an ambitious expedition to resettle the Tree of Stone. Unfortunately, the gate of Pol al Krakazul was sealed shut during their exodus, and no dwarf was sober enough to remember to keep the hidden door unlocked. They will have to make the long way around. So this is how you start playing as the Expel Cartel. So first things first, we're going to see if we actually get a good start. If not, I have a backup. Let's get one day. We got a 464. Okay, that's actually pretty good. All right, got to give it a little bit of time for the air to spawn in. So uh, some stuff can actually happen. It takes a second. There he is. He's awful. It's too bad. It's fine, because we're not going to use him. We're actually going to take the star. The start's pretty good so far, so we're going to take Call to Surfacers, and if everything is fine, we're just going to do that. We're going to move here immediately. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to wait the tech. It is better to wait the month tech, because that way I get Dwarven Advisors. There's Adventures in the New World. We have taken a step beyond our kin and set off for uncharted lands to explore what newfound wealth and opportunities we may discover. Give me a bunch of free stuff. All right, that's the beginning of the month. That should give me good advisors. Yes, it does. We're going to take the morale guy because he'll be useful. And then the other guys, we can just go cheap. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Okay, let's grab the institutions. And grab this. And now we move here. Oh, I got Mithril. That's... That's pretty promising. And now the main thing to check here is because I know right here, I played this start a bunch of times just because it's a hard start. And I know that there is an expedition target right here. Now, if this expedition target, it needs to be long and either platinum or mithril for this start to be worth it. Otherwise, I'll just try and reload a bunch. It is platinum long. Perfect. So we will deal with that in... We can do that in a second. So mapping the Dwarvar. The tunnels and caverns of the Dwarvar are magnificent and daunting, and the myths and legends of our ancestral knowledge will not suffice for real navigation. For that, you will need to outfit a scouting expedition. Excuse me, a conquistador. And then hidden in the mountain stone. Many secrets have been lost in these halls. Perhaps we can find a few. Excuse me, 50 dipple points. Just need the expedition target. Alright, we're going to switch over from shield walls to the tortoise formation. The life of a single dwarf is worth far more than the death of a single goblin, and thus dwarven military doctrine tended to prioritize self-preservation above all else. This concept was realized in the classic tortoise formation, a mix between a classic shield wall and the one-sided phalanx. Though ultimately situational, its ability to defend from missiles and footmen alike made it a mainstay of adventure bands in the Dwarvar during the early stages of the Reclamation. Uh, idea group, we're starting with religious, I have found that to be the most useful one. Let's see, we can turn these three off, and we're going to start the expedition. Okay, 
So, in case you are new to this, because this was only a couple... It was like two updates ago that we got expeditions. So, basically what's happening is, when you're in the Dwarvar, you can do these expeditions for... invest. You have investment points, and you invest soldiers. And you go in, and you get stuff out of it. And it's useful. Very useful, especially if you are an adventuring company like this. So, what you do is you organize it. Select it, organize it. This is the danger level. It goes from... What's it? Copper, silver, gold, platinum, mithril. And then you can get dungeons, which are chromium. And then it's long, short. Long, short, or medium. Alright. And then estimated loot is about how much you're going to get out of it. So you're always going to want to send 10,000 men. Just because you can get them back at the end if they survive. Uh, morale, I have found that this is optimal. Supplies, always want to max out supplies. And I'm doing that evenly because I need to get what I can out of this. I want this as high as I can because if I find hobgoblins, which is sadly common, then um, I'll be sad because I'm going to lose a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to... You want roughly about a third of that to make it go nice and smoothly? So I'm going to round down for... I usually just do a third of this and round down the nearest hundred. That should be good. And if we lose, then, well, well, I guess it's restart, huh? All right, so here we go. They're right there. Going to rebuild my army. Currently, my force limit is 19. And so we're going to be working on that while this is going. Yeah, you see these forts right here? That'll go away. Don't worry about that. It's a bit of a slow start, but that's just how playing the Dwarvar is. After we get this done... We're going to migrate over here. Let's grab another guy. We're going to migrate over here. Kill these guys. Because it's fun. Okay. This is what the events in the expeditions are like. Basically, you get events, and the expedition can change depending on what it is. A scandal has embroiled our expedition. Multiple explorers have lost all decorum and gotten stone-cold drunk. Parading through the expedition camp, singing songs so out of tune, they ought to have their mouths clamped shut. But that would just address the symptoms, not the underlying problems. We must do something about this behavior, or we will have an army of drunkards instead of a well-organized group of explorers. So I can make it... I can do that, I can do this, or, because we're amethyst dwarves, I can lose supplies and go drinking with them. Which is... Since this happened very early, it's actually really useful. Normally you don't want supplies to go down, because that's... If the supplies go down, you just die. But it's early enough that I think the costs are worth it. Goblin minority dwindles. That means there's less goblins here. Oh, well. Ooh, hello. Going deeper. Very nice. So, as you go down, the winding tunnels of the serpent spine sometimes layer in strange ways that facilitate short respite, or, in our case, a sig signal of finished region. Before us lies another inlet, now even deeper into the cavernous depths. We are ready to continue. So, what you get is, if you are a one-province miner, you get prestige and Ancient Dwarven Knowledge. If you're not, you just get the Prestige. Ancient Dwarven Knowledge, you'll see what happens when the expedition's done. But, yeah. And then Treasure Trove. A rock slide in a cave has uncovered a sprawling mine complex, possibly hundreds of years old. Although the mine itself seems to have long since been completely emptied of anything worth digging up, during our explorations, we came across a massive hoard of jewelry and coinage, presumably left here for safekeeping, before the entrance was buried. Uh, cool. Uh, I can neither get points or money. I got admin points. Very nice. Let's get this going. I have two more I can grab. Basically, I just want that maxed out. The oil cap. The soldiers returning to camp for a most recent foraging trip bring with them a strange breed of mushrooms, one that has never been seen before by anyone in the camp. The cap has a strange, oily shimmer to it, refracting the light of our lanterns and torches in strange patterns like a puddle of oil. For that reason, our head biologist has dubbed them oil caps. They exude an alluring smell, which raises the cook's interest as to whether they can be consumed safely or not. Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to take it, because supplies are useful. Overdose! Eh. The soldiers eating the mushrooms seem to have a great time, eating more and more in their increasingly ecstatic state. This invites others to join them in their revelry, but just as a new group of mushroom-hungry men arrive, the first ones, who have eaten copious amounts of mushrooms by now, start coughing and their mouths begin to foam. They fall over with dull eyes, as if they have gone blind. The state of unconsciousness soon ends with death. The entire body slumped after an episode of intense twitching. Those that witnessed this threw the mushroom away in disgust, but for some, it was already too late. 
Those that survive the twitches and tremors are in an unstable state of mind, needing constant attention. But hey, I get I get morale out of it, so worth it. The 5% organization sucks, but eh, I got morale out of it. Morale is also very useful. Alright, let's pop on more. Okay, this means we can move. We're not going to do that until this expedition's done. Because if you do it while there's no more expedition, we can go in deeper. Well, the expedition dies. And we can always check this button to see how we're doing. We are almost breaking even after two floors. Looks pretty good overall, I'd say. Hopefully we get the high end of loot. But more loot means this, uh, this run's going to go better. This is how that works. A flock of cloakers. While exploring the caverns and crevices of the Serpent Spine, it is not uncommon for the groups to dispense from time to time, leaving stragglers behind. At the end of the day, they usually join with the main group ahead. <laughs> main group again, and that's it. Usually. While counting our numbers at the day's end, the Quartermaster quickly pick picked up upon a few missing expeditionaries. There's always a typo there. Getting out there, get out there and find them, the captain commands. But before we could depart, they soon arrived at camp, in a dead sprint running away from soft, sailing shadows above them. Cloakers! One shouts, before being picked up by one of these nightmarish creatures. Archers, let's go! The aberrations disperse in the darkness. As soon as our archers and gunners took aim and started bombarding the cloakers with arrows, the lead monsters quickly disper dispersed. They are known for picking up stragglers and people left behind on battlefields, a seasoned adventurer calls. Not for direct attacks. We must have scared them away. So I lose 75 soldiers, but I get morale back, which is very nice. Alright, let's get some more guys. Pitch Black Darkness. The caverns in the Serpent Spine are usually lined with luminescent plants, fungi, and other sources of ambient light. But there are some parts where no light pierces the darkness, places of eternal gloom, where some of the most dangerous monsters will house. As the expedition enters one of these dark stretches, a Gru, a terrifying monstrosity of the dark, attacks. Get him? Banish the darkness! With sword and spears, the Gru was driven into the light, where it lost most of its shadowy advantage sending the monster into a blind rage, thrashing and wailing at the expedition. This opened the way for a coordinated attack, killing the beast. Very nice. 50 loot, 1 morale. Nice. I would like to get a Tunneling Menace, because that gives... Ooh, okay, going deeper. Tunneling Menace, because you can kill it for supplies, and I kind of need that. Uh, running low on supplies. I would like them. Why are we losing so much money? Why are we losing so much money, actually? We shouldn't be losing... Oh, right, we have a level 2 guy still. Whoops, forgot to switch that back. Now we're losing a tiny bit of money. That's much better. Whoops, forgot about that. Haha, <laughs> I did noopsie. How old is my leader? 54. Cool. Going deeper, very nice. What is my loot at? 1030, we're almost at the minimum threshold. Very good. Do we have more than broken either? Broken even. Goblin ambush. Almost out of nowhere, a gigantic army of goblins descended upon us, crawling out of every nook, cranny, and Nook and cranny, every small tunnel and crevice around us, with split fletched teeth and crude yet painful weapons, they scream in anger, preparing for their attack, striking fear into the eyes and hearts of our explorers. So death to screen skins, let's kill them. Decisive strike, very nice. Quickly our soldiers scramble to the front to prepare for impact. Shields and spears are ready for the onslaught. As the goblins approach, they are met with grim resolve, metal striking metal, steel scraping on crude armor. We slay countless of their number, and the, re and the rest soon flee. Right, so morale and organization are both useful for morale you need morale up so that your soldiers don't desert organization means it's uh easier higher organization means it's easier to uh get good of good results on events like this we got 200 loot and half morale very nice but i lost 300 guys yeah happens i would like supplies can we get a tunneling menace sure mir oh that this is the other one that's good Glittering in the faint bioluminescence of the cavern walls lies a pool of clear, calm water. The surface, like a mirror. Soon the first soldiers arrive at the shore, the water skins ready to be refilled. So, yeah. Unless it's really early, it's always worth going for this, because you could get uh, supplies out of it. There we go, reinvigorated. The cold water coats our throats and inspires us to go further. Press onward, uncover the secrets that await our frying eyes and ears. Which is 3% supplies? It's godsend, honestly. Well, there are we on. We are one, two, three, four. We're on the fifth one. All right, we're we're getting there. Let's just hope this works out nicely. Drum to the deep. All right, cave trolls, bellowing screams and drum-like pounding echo.
echo through the winding hallways, sure signs that there are cave trolls near. Despite their sluggish movements and stupid grimaces, they do know how to kill. We have been cornered into a cave with no other exit, and the stomping of feet draws ever nearer to us. So the barricade, prepare the weapons. Victory! As a sword plunged through the la last living troll, the expedition rejoices. Around them lie the misshaped bodies of dozens of cave trolls. Their skin slit open, skulls bashed, the drums have gone quiet, and safety has returned to these halls. For now. Death to Giant Ken, very nice. Half morale, but I lose 100 soldiers. Doing really good on morale. For I'm pretty happy with that. Next level, very nice. What's my loot at? Uh, 1505, very nice. Looks like this is going pretty well. Unless we run out of supplies, in which case, um, they're probably going to die. But hey, it's good for now. This is 0 4 the whole time, really? Hey, he's got 2 siege. 4 shock's pretty good. Let's see where this goes. Going deeper, very nice. That means you get loot when you go deeper also, so I get to refresh that. 1810. 11% supplies. I would like more supplies, please. Right, and as you go down, you get loot at the expense of morale and organization, and I think soldiers too. The caverns through which the expedition travels are normally abundant with dust, mushrooms, and all other odd things one might find deep within the serpent spine. For the last few days, the caverns have been suspiciously clean, however, featuring spotless, smooth stone. This has alerted some of the more experienced, seasoned members of our expedition to a possible danger, the infamous gelatinous cube. A mindless creature made of oozing gel in the shape of a cube, scouring empty hallways like large garbage disposal, digesting whatever junk they picked up with their potent acid. And sure enough, after a few more hours, our scouts report floating report of floating chests and swords further along the path, suspended within the almost translucent mass of the cube. A few soldiers, clad in whatever protective gear they could find, approach the creature. Now for further inspection, they argue about how to go about the situation putting two possible possibilities, two possible possibilities, all right, someone needs to rewrite this, in front of the expedition leader, dispose of the cube entirely by burning it to the ground, or try to retrieve the loot from within the cube without the danger of harming the treasure. Uh, go for it, raid is good. Slimy loot, very nice. Got the good event. The unfortunate soldiers that were tasked with retrieving the loot from the slime cube shuddered upon the thought of having to reach within the slimy mass, within the slimy mass out of their own volition. After, after some heavy encouraging and promising them a greater share of spoils, one brave soul finally committed to the deed. He covered his arm with as much cloth as possible, tying it tightly to him, and reached inside. Despite all precautions, he could still feel a faint sizzling, but managed to pull out some of the surface treasure, some of the surface treasure out. The chests and weapons are still covered in the slime and ooze of the cube, however, and he refuses to clean them on the basis that he has done enough already. Very nice. I get uh, free loot and some morale. Very nice. More loot is more good. Come on. Let's finish this expedition, please, before I die. Great mushrooms? Oh, thank goodness. A great cavern opens in front of the expedition leader. Small streams of water trickling down several... down the natural stairs carved out by a long past tectonic activity. After a few steps down the water converges to a lake. The water converges to a lake. Surrounded by greater-than-life mushrooms, their stalks glow violet and the caps exude a dizzying smell, but not necessarily in a bad way. At their feet are more colonies with smaller mushrooms, with, with up, with up many different colors. I think up is just extra there. Uh, yeah, we need the food. Please don't be poisonous. Yay, very nice. Among the samples the expedition took were many edible and quite frankly delicious specimens. A small group went back to get some more, and the cooks are thankful for the variety they brought to the dreary diet. Very nice. Seven percent supplies. All right, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it, boys. Uh, I really hope we do, actually. There is a non-zero chance we don't. But I hope we do. Oh, yeah, time to grab this. And I do think we're going to want to do this, just for later. Ah, they're back! Alright, cool. As the explorers, mercenaries, adventurers, clerics, warriors, and colonists return, they are hailed as heroes. They bring with them coffers full of gold and ancient artifacts and parade through the streets of Eric's End. Very nice. Uh, so I can either put them in the manpower pool or send them back out. I'm going to send them back out because they're useful right now. And Ancient Dwarven Knowledge. The expedition has returned with Ancient Dwarven Knowledge. The Master Engineers request exclusive access to this knowledge, believing its technical knowledge could help better develop our hold. However, the scholars wish for it exclusively for themselves, too. For they claim the wisdom of the elders and precedence 
and the precedence of managing a large state, like was the Aldwarov, could be applied to better the workings of our state as a whole. So either you put it into the hold, which gives you one click of development, gives you two clicks, or this would be nine times, or you put it into government reform progress, which is what I'm going to do. Alright, so whoop, we're going to go through this right now. Um, I have found that leadership of the clans is the best one. Is that the best one? Factor cost is always useful. Why do I go for that one? Stab cost. Right, yeah, stabbing up to the early is pretty useful. And now we're going to use this. Eh, no, we're going to wait for the next... We're going to wait for the next thing. Got minority dwindles. We shall go and read these now. So Dwarvar Adventurer Company. Is there any... No, no flavor on that one? A loose former government centered around a large adventuring party, exploration, and settling the Dwarvar. Use adventure and efficiency mechanics, which simulates the spoils of passive adventure within the company. Very nice. Call to the surfacers. The green tide is broken. The Dwarvar is open. Come all my kin and answer my cry. It is time to come home, children of Balgar, children of Hehogrim, children of the Dwarven Everbeard, of Dagrin Everbeard. We are all dwarves, and we must all do our part to find our way home at long last. Which is actually really useful, because it gives me global steadily increase until uh, we're done with us. And then leadership of the clans. Each dwarf belongs to a clan, and that each, each to a clan, and that clan theoretically looks after their own. Despite living amongst the surfacers all this time, these clans underpin and teach us what it means to be dwarven, per preserving the sometimes rigid ways of all dwarf, where our people might fa might falter. Cool, very nice. So we're going to uh, first for anything we're going to migrate over here. Very nice. All right. Very nice, got interest anti monsters on them. We're going to wait until we can rival them, which should be in just a couple days. There it is. Treasure trope. Very nice. We already had this event. Let's see what we get. I got admin points again. I'll take it. Chain grasper. What's up, dude? Time to kill you. They are already my rivals, so let's just do it. This is why. And this is why I kept those guys around. Uh, let's just hold off right here for now. I want the tick. One more tick. Very nice. Get that siege. Cool. Kill them. Very nice. And we're gonna kill them. Yeah, I figured that would happen. One more. There we go. And we're gonna send a couple guys down to go finish that off. I believe this is Diplo attack. Is it worth the innovativeness? Yeah, probably. We're not gonna use the Diplo attack for a while. We're not gonna use Diplo points for a while. Because developing this land isn't really worth it right now. Very nice. But it looks like uh, they didn't kill enough of us. Oh well. These guys will be... We're going to be way over the force limit for a while. That's honestly fine. Let's grab this. Then the next one can go into stability. Come on, finish them off. Yeah, I don't need this many men, so I'm just going to do that whenever it's time. Come on. And military points, too. I'm... Yeah, I'm going to take that also. Cool. That means we get cannon. We finish that. Let's grab this one. Very important. Kill them off. Very nice. Alright, corruption. Um, We don't... Uh, what's our progress right now? 41. That's a lot. Take the stab at it. It's not really a problem. Alright, so, what I do with this is I do that, you give me all your money, uh, give me a Humiliate, and a War Reps. Very good. Now you guys come over here, I take the Diamonds and Rubies. Gems are truly outrageous, and extracting them is an important step to rebuilding our society in the eyes of our brethren. Very nice, free 15 Prestige, love it. It is, however, time to start that. I'm slightly overextended. Religious unity is bad. That was the normal amount of points, though. Oh, look at that. Alright, cool. So what we're going to do is... This button right here. We're going to release Poisoned Rock. We're going to wait a second. And now you get to have this province. Very nice. And now I should have a decision to purge Warband. 
We have defended, we've defeated one of the war bands infesting our lands. It's time for them to feel our wrath. Which gives me military points and temple points, and that province is just completely uncolonized. Boop, there we go. And now we go back. Alright. These guys will soon purge this province, and it'll be fine. In the meantime, it's time to start improving relations with them. Alright, you have done your job, and we shall be migrating. I know where all of the expedition targets are because I've played this save file a lot. Because I need to do a lot of test runs. So the next one is going to be right here, right next to Holal Krakazol. It'll be a couple years before we get there. When are we migrating? Migrating at the end of 4, so at 5. Cool. I'm going to time this as well as I can. Not too bad. Just a couple more months. 3, 4... I'm not going to do it on the day exactly. We're going to do it... Well, might as well. I already have it paused. Cool. We're going to be trying to do that at the beginning of the month, just because it's easier that way. Yeah, so it's mostly waiting until we get to this next expedition, and then that's where it's going to be. Chain Grasper. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Dak. I suck your stuff. You can always pillars or capital, but getting more money out of them is usually worth it. Three, four. All right, let's migrate. Serpent Bloom, very nice. Plus, and Unpause, very nice. Right, and now that we have this Vassal, our force limit is up to 21, which is useful. And the Vassal is not very useful, though. It's fine. Goblin Minister. While goblins are typically lacking in strength and bravery, they make it up... They make... It up in their cunning and innovation. Consisting of the more creative minds across Halan, goblins will oftentimes find the most surprising solutions to issues that can plague traditional scholars for years. Now, one of the most innovative of their kind has come to offer their services to the captain and use their mind for the betterment of the realm, provided we pay for any damage that may occur during their research. So, when we get up here, when we start conquering all these goblins up here, I want goblins to be coexisting and not integrated. Not yet, at least, because I will have to cold convert them, because I want to. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go for the advisor. Let's pump it up a little bit and find guidance, free stab. I'm going to bump up stab first, because I'd like it to get up to two. Okay, very nice. And now the goblin, did I get this one? No, I always get this one for some reason. I'll take, I'll take a cheaper advisor, though. That's more money. More money for me. Look at that, we're making money. That was exactly enough to make money. Wow. All right. We're almost there. Oop, right. End of the month. Da-da-da. All right. And migrate. Cool. Let's grab the idea. Very nice. And this gives me a call to reclamation. The fall of Kugdir in 1424 was a stark reminder of what the dwarves lost e aeons ago to the orcish and goblin hordes. The breaking of the green tide in 1443, however, was a rallying cry to the dwarves of Kanor, scions of lost holds, cartels, great families, and even famous individuals, no matter the dwarf, are all kin of Belgar, are all are kin of Dagrin Everbeard, and all have been roused to great action. It is time to return to our mountain homelands and reclaim what our ancestors built. So the entire true faith provinces, very useful. All right, we're almost there. Yeah, it is the one right here. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Probably have enough time to at least get there. I think we'll do that expedition on the next one. This looks like how time is working out. Ooh, he's careful. Aggressive expansion impact. That is... Eh, not as good as one of my test runs, but it's pretty good. It's a positive trait. I'll take it. Exceptional gear. Um... Nah, just give me the money. Is it... What? How much am I going to get off of this? Eh, whatever. Really not a big deal. Oh, I forgot to migrate. Whoops. And yes, it's right here. We are going to see if it's any good first, and then we'll uh, set it up. And then that'll be probably the end of this episode. We're going to wait for now. Yeah, playing on the Serpent's Spine is kind of slow. I did the fun part, so that's fun.
This guy's just chilling over here. About to be maxed out on relations. Moving on to six. And that's three. And that's four. And five. Okay, that's done. Cool. And end of the month. Da, 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 da. One more. One more. There we go. Okay. First, let's look at the expedition. It is platinum medium. That's not what I was hoping for, but, you know, I'll take it. You know, it's not the worst thing. Let's get it all set up. So, higher difficulty means uh, better loot. Longer length means you're going to be in there longer, but higher return. So, first, we're sending in ten men. Yep. I'm going to raise morale up two. And then we're going to organize twice, because hobgoblins are scary. Yeah, that's probably good. And then supplies, we're going all on equipment, because um, I have excess military points, but not excess admin. And then the share, they're at 700, so we're, it's a third rounded down, so that's 200. And yeah, I think I'm good with that. All right. But that's where we're going to have to end this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you next time.